Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, we're going to try to launch the Neko space plane to our station, our improved space station, the larger one at a higher orbit, and bring three Kerbals to it, and they will have to stay for some time. And then we have to bring them back safely. Now, the Neko space plane has worked pretty well so far. Uh, it still has overheating occasionally, but it's not critical, maybe, hopefully. Uh, it might be a little bit different with Kerbals on board, though. On launch, we've had trouble with the Neko because once the external tank, well, it's actually the core stage with the Vulcane engine, depletes, the center mass goes towards the space plane and it all gets them unbalanced. So I've added, unfortunately, lead weight to the nose of the core stage, the Vulcane stage, in the hope that that will help. Will it? I don't know. I could throw everything off for all I know. So we will see. I've tried to take a look at the center mass and center thrust and all that business in the VAB, but it's a little bit hard. So we will be prepared for disaster. And uh, we need three people. So um, it's not letting me put anybody in the crew cabin here. Oh, they're not trained for the crew cabin. They have to be trained separately for the crew cabin. Right. So, <laughs> well, they have to have the proficiency, but I think it's still instantaneous. Let me just try and get them all ready for, yeah, it's still instantaneous here for the Mark II parts. Uh, in a more recent update for RP-1, that might have changed. And I'll just get them, well, if, they're, if they have mission training, that's got to wipe out their other mission training. So, we will have... Uh, Muhammad, who's an engineer, be in the crew cabin. And then we'll have uh, our latest retiring member there. Okay, so we'll have those two. Okay, so now... Uh, okay, there's a message there. Alright, now launch. Alright, so now we have... We don't need two of them. We'll just have Muhammad, Barbal, and Heidi, I think. And that'll be our three. Let's see if this works. Oh, let's have the shoot and EVA packs just in case. All right, well, here it goes. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. Oh, one failure. Um, I think we'll go on that one. That's one of the RZ-20 verniers on the Volcane stage, but it's not critical. So you can see, I just slapped the lead tanks on top there in those procedural tanks. They look sort of like they're lead, so... It's okay. They're both on one side. Okay, thrust weight ratio mitigation. We should probably have done that earlier though. Okay, booster set. Alright, they are off. And we're still balanced, so that's good. Oh, we've got that wobble going again. It's a little bit pronounced, so I'm gonna ignite these guys. And enable crossfeed. Well, at least it dampens out once we've done that. But uh, still not great. Do have to do that so early. We use a little bit of fuel here, but not too bad. Pretty much in line with the station. I'm gonna take the risk of turning this one off, since those two are on. That'll help with our propellant mixture, because right now the propellant mixture assumes these two are on, but not that three of those RZ-20s are on. Uh, a lot is predicated- oh, I thought that tank would, uh, deplete last. That's not right. That's the whole point. Like, we've got these reversed. Right at the end, that's not going to make a big deal, but right now it'll help. Seems better balanced.
that it's wobbling. Okay, that's good enough for me. Off that goes. Still troublesome. Uh, it should give us enough fuel to do our work here. Okay, that'll do. 160, I'm oh, sorry, 260 by 165, and we're 0.02 degrees off, so not bad there. Lots and lots of propellant compared to previous times, which will help initially, but we'll probably have to dump some on re-entry. So, okay, catch-up time. Okay, at this point we'll make a tangency. And we're going up to 500 kilometers. Now, the station needs to be below 500 kilometers, though. <laughs> um, why is it at 501, anyway? That doesn't seem right. We're going to have to pop on over to the station to fix that. So we'll go to just under 500 kilometers and go over to fix the station. Well, it's a little bit too close. I don't want to nudge the station too high while docking. Okay, so we have a little bit of a problem. Let me jump over to the station. And hopefully it'll still like the station now that it seems like it's too high. Maybe 490 will be okay. That... I think it's already okay with this one. As long as when we are docked, it's not too high, it'll be okay. But I'll put it even further down just in case. Gotta watch the periapsis too. Really ought to round that out a little bit better. But anyway, it's okay for now. Okay, we've got a rendezvous within render range right around here. So, alright, let's get there. Star of Rendezvous will be in the dark, but most of the Rendezvous and docking will be in daylight. Alright. Let me get parallel, but we have to control from here. Oops. Uh, okay, the station needs to stop turning. Actually, maybe you can help us out here, station, since you're so eager. Okay, well, a view of South India and Sri Lanka here as we come in for docking. Okay, we have docked, but that was the easy part. So uh, now, uh, well, for first docking by a space plane, we have to return home safely, which, you know, well, at least it's checkmarked everything this time. And for this one, we have to stay here for 30 days and then return home safely. Now, as far as our supplies are concerned, we have way more than 30 days, so that's not a problem. Um, nitrogen is, for some reason, 137 days, so we'll have to watch out for that in the future. We might want to carry some up or something. Uh, but, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. And they have, t well... Muhammad has 12% radiation, uh, Barbell has 2%, and Heidi has 1%. None of them has any stress. So we're starting off pretty well, and let's see, everything has to remain power balanced and all that business. We're at day 307 for the station. I should turn off the fuel cells, they're contributing right now. But... Actually, it occurs to me, we, oh yeah, we have, we have one Gemini fuel cell and one Apollo fuel cell. Why do we have one of, one, that's, I, I placed them in symmetry. They should have both been Apollo fuel cells. Maybe that's why one of our engines is overheating, because like, there's a slight imbalance in the space plane, because one fuel cell is different. That's weird. Okay, anyway, um... Yeah, I, I don't want the fuel cells running. Let's 
make sure the solar panels are doing their job. Actually, it doesn't seem like they're doing enough of a job. Nitrogen depletion is higher than I thought it would be. Okay, we're below half of our power. Eight more days, though. Maybe the space plane blocking the solar panels a little bit might hurt, but we might need more solar panel over here. Maybe another one of those attached solar arrays would be a good idea. I think we'll send a truss with a lot of nitrogen inside that will add some solar panels to it before seeing another crew up. The last few days I'll run the fuel cells. Gets us all the way back up in power. Okay, we have completed the 30 days. All right, well, now we have to line back up with our launch site, which is right there. We're not too far off now. It might be a couple of orbits. So we're all charged up again. Let's undock now. I don't think we need to grab any of the fuel from the station. We're pretty okay. We're only going to use that for RCS propellant. This will do our deorbit burn. But uh, maybe I should bring... Well, we've got extra in the cockpit as well. We've got stuff up here too. Okay, so... You know, I might have thought of the balance a little bit wrong. With the Kerbals in the front, we're going to need even more in the back, huh? <laughs> I messed that up. Uh, I thought about that the wrong way around. Uh, we gotta be a little bit nose heavy. So you know what, I'll, I'll grab some of the propellant from the station, just in case. I'm gonna switch which one depletes first too. Okay. Undock. sure we're controlling from here. Oh, we should have done the TV broadcast or something. See, now that becomes unchecked now. Right? It, it had everything checked. And now after we docked two spacecraft, it had checked that che and even checked that. But now it's unchecked those. Even though land horizontally shouldn't have been checked in the first place. So yeah, I'll force complete it after this one. I decided not to force complete it before, but I think it's pretty clear now that that's just messed up. I don't know why. There's other docking contracts that work just fine. Okay, and we'll try to get into a standard orbit first. One and a half hour orbit, I mean. We have six more ignitions with these engines. I think the coming orbit will be close enough. Okay, that's perfect. Right, so I think... It looks like the landing site will be where we want it to be on this coming orbit. So at 174 degrees east, we will deorbit. Ah, uh, we're a little bit late. Okay, I'll do the rest of RCS. Going for negative 40 again. Hope that's alright. But we had a mass limit of 20, uh, 17 tons, I think, was what we were going for. So as I get this set up, let me try and get that down to where it needs to be as well. Let's do a wastewater dump. Waste a dump too. 
I'm going to dump a bunch of the water. And then the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Well, I'm just going to dump all of it. And it's still not quite good enough. Might dump the RCS propellant from the nose. Basically, what we picked up at the station. Well, we're lighter than we need to be, so that's good. I guess it doesn't matter if we carry the extra helium. And all right, we're coming down. It's in the dark for now, but we should be landing in daylight. Still looks to be a little bit nose heavy as we are now getting into the sunrise. There's not anything more than I can send to the back though. So we might have to do lead weights at some point or something. Cockpit is overheating. I hope that was the normal thing that happens around here. <laughs> right? I hope that's the normal thing. Yeah, it's really pushing it, but we will be going up soon. Uh, well, the other engine has joined engine number one. Quickly. It really joined engine one quickly. Okay, going up now. Please cool off everything. And a canard is overheating. Seems like there's more overheating this time than previous times, even though we're probably under 17 tons. And both canards. I don't like that the other one started overheating just now while we're going up. But the cockpit indicator is gone now. Well, we are approaching the South American coast. Very important because, of course, we want to set that on land somewhere. And not overshoot Kuru as well. It looks pretty balanced though, so actually it wasn't too much of a problem as far as the center of mass being too far forward. I think we're pretty good right now. Of course we have to dump a lot of stuff to make it pretty good. Let me see, is landing guidance still sort of primed for crew? So that will show our current situation with that target difference. We're using much more pitch authority now. Maybe I should pitch down. We do need further distance. Just a tad south. Probably nothing we need to correct right now. And the crew cabin. Now the crew cabin starts overheating. Crazy. What a strange, strange thing. Along with the fact that they have to be specially uh, trained for the mission in order to be in the crew cabin. That's also a strange thing. But I guess otherwise people would use it to, like, cheat. We probably need to slow down. I'm feeling pretty good that we can cover the distance. I mean, mind you, that's the distance between the blue marker and there, not the distance between us right now and Kuru. It's the distance between if we dropped, like, a ballistic projectile, how far away from Kuru would we be? Okay, no more warning on the crew cabin. I think I can see the terrain up there. I think I'll put out the brakes. Looking very good here.
think at this point I'll use Atmosphere God Pilot to take control. And we don't need RCS. And we don't need landing guidance either. I can see the runway. As well activate those thrusters. Ah, there's the city of Kuru. Hope they don't mind the sonic boom. Well, barely a sonic boom, really. Oh, it definitely accelerates way too fast if we bring those brakes in. So let's leave those out for a bit. Okay, landing gear. Uh, I gotta fix this terrain somehow, but it's tough. The default terrain is persistent. Okay, we are down. Not exactly on the center line, but pretty darn good. Don't need to use drag chute. All right, they are home. Well, hold on, let's recover vessel first. Okay, normal recovery. It's like the, the last thing that the game can do to me is like crash right there and deny everything, right? Uh, so yes, now officially they are all good and hopefully it's saved that state. And we actually get quite a lot back, 31,000 funds, so it's certainly worth it in that respect. We might want to reuse this thing and actually store it. Might be worth enough for that. But, alright. So, what is the status of our missions? Well, the, the station one is done. Improved space station. We'll have to do the next space station one, which is... Okay, this should be the next... Uh, okay, I can see why maybe this this uh, program is not perfectly developed here, right? They said there were issues, but mm, let's see, what were we supposed to do? It's, it doesn't seem to be allowing me to do it. But also there's the issue of first docking by a space plane capstone. I think we can all agree that I've done that by now, right? So, uh, most of the comments said that I should force complete it anyway, uh, but, mm, contracts, active, complete. Okay, I think we can agree that that's done. So it says, crew your improved space station for 60 days and collect science. Okay. It looks like we can't get this contract because it doesn't feel like this contract was met even though we did it. It says we did it, right? It says completed here. So why does it say completed here but not understand that it's completed here? Well, it says it completed it. Station exists is unmet. So I'm going to try and see what I can do in the persistent file to fix this so that we can get this contract. But they're sort of trivial contracts anyway. Now that we've uh, completed the crude space plane stuff, maybe we should use those slots for something else that is more far flung and not buggy. So uh, maybe some of these, I'll think about it. Uh, where should we go to next? Maybe you guys have some opinions. I'm not too into rovers because that's a whole other complication with wheels and such, but um, there's, there is Mars, there's Mercury, there's Saturn, there's this outer planets flyby sequence, which is sort of like Voyager, except it's got Pluto thrown in as well. well Voyager could have done Pluto as well, but it couldn't have done the others and Pluto, so, well, Jupiter and Pluto, but, um, and then we have the whole Uranus, Neptune, Triton, and complete any of those, and, and atmospheric probe. That will take a while. I hope they gave us enough time. It says 27 years, but it takes a while to get out there. And then uh, Pluto. Just Pluto. Straight up Pluto. 
Where you can get out there in 31 years sort of depends on whether you can get the Jupiter flyby, which in the worst case scenario takes 12 years to line up. And then it'll take 15 years to get there. But then if you use the Jupiter flyby, it takes it gives you more of a boost, but then you need more delta V to slow down in order to get into Pluto orbit. And then landing is a whole other business. So those are challenging, and we'll see about that. But we should have the contract slots available once I complete the crewed space plane development program. I think we can agree that I've completed that. Uh, we've got a nice little space plane that works pretty consistently. So, all right. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.